Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of A Couple of Creatives. Whose voice is that? It's my radio announcer voice, my podcasting voice. Can we give him a name? It, uh, <laughs> I just went with the most basic name. I was going to be like John, and I was like, that's not fun or entertaining at all. Okay, what's the name? You're good at naming things. Billy Snow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy Snow. See, it sounds and good. And I'm the Does narrator and host for a couple of creatives. No, so we'd like to introduce like, our guests be, for the evening. You'd be the weatherman on the news. <laughs> Toronto and Calgary, Alberta's experienced another rainfall and some more snow and then some blistering heat over the next three days. I'm Billy Snow. Thanks for listening. I'm to Billy Snow. Today's. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, guys. Uh, if you guys are new to the episode, uh, my name is Chris and we have the lovely. That's when you say your oh, name. Am I supposed to introduce, introduce you? Yeah. Lizzie I'm Pierce. I'm Lizzie Pierce. You know that. This is taking a long time to start. Yeah, so let's jump right into our subject. Uh, today, we are talking about how to say no. Uh, this is a really important uh, aspect if you are a creative uh, working in this field, especially if you're a freelance creative. Um, you know, it's a little harder when you're working a nine to five job because, you know, you got to make it work for your company. But when you're working freelance, it's very, very difficult. So I thought we'd share a few stories today of our experiences of saying no, our opinions and thoughts. Lizzie, would you like to dive well, into that? I think because everybody, especially when you're first starting, you want to say yes to everything. Yes. And sometimes when projects go wrong, you're like, was this my fault or was this not my fault? Was this something I could have controlled or was this something that um, was, I guess, out of my control and something that maybe the the client actually created the problem? I mean, a lot of times it's probably something you could have prevented because I think a lot of things get lost in communication. Communication is like huge. Of people's problem and production and assuming things yeah making assumptions that'll run you into the ground but i think you i think saying no and knowing when to say no to projects is a great way of avoiding those potential problems and you know streamlining your process into taking projects that are going to be fruitful for you in some way, whether it's financially or, you know, knowing all of the categories that that project checks off, whether it's going to be, like I said, financially rewarding or whether it's going to be um, rewarding to like your morals and your ethics and things or like that. Portfolio or your portfolio or whatever ends up being. Yeah. Like whatever that project checks, you know, checks those boxes off on your list of like what's important. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I want to. I have two things I wanted to touch on. So one of my favorite quotes, and one of the things I kind of like, in how I like to live my life by, is a quote by I believe it's Miles Davis. I'm not going to say it qu like quote unquote, but here's the general theme of it. Uh, he has the, the gist. The the notes that you don't play are just as important as the notes that you do play, and that's what makes the song. And I think you love that quote. I love that quote. I think it's so powerful because it's it's so easy to relate to. If you played all the notes on a piano, it would just sound like garbage. And then you'd be like, this doesn't make sense. You've heard singers too, who like certain ones who are trying out for like American Idol and things like that. When they sing a certain song and they're trying to do all of these runs and all of this fancy stuff and they end up like they're nailing it, but they end up ruining the song in the process because it's yep. too much. And the song is actually more powerful when they only play the notes that are necessary. Yep. For that tune or, or to make it Or impactful. hit those notes properly because you have the energy to do it. Exactly. Not and, overkill. And I think yeah. it's just like, it's such a great analogy in terms of the way that you look at your life, especially when it comes to work. Because your career is its own like beautiful song if you want to make an analogy out of it. And I think uh, you have to... Uh, That's so inspirational. I don't, I don't... Your career is your own beautiful song. <laughs> I don't mean it to sound like that, but I think it's a great way of at least thinking about how your life looks from like a bird's eye view. Um, so for me, I think that's something that always stuck with me is that uh, saying no is just as important as saying yes. So for Lizzie and I, both within our company and our social media infrastructure, or jobs or careers or whatever you want to call it, um, we have kind of some like different, I guess, check marks that we look for uh, when we're working with a company or a brand or, you know, looking to promote a product or whatever that ends up being. So there's a bit of a checklist. Do you want to run through some of the things on our checklist before we say, yes, we're actually doing this job? 
I definitely wrote them down last week, and now I already don't. But you, you I'll know try. the gist of it. One is uh, financial, obviously. Yeah. If it pays well, yeah, but that's not the only – like. And this list isn't doesn't mean that if one of these is checked off, then we do it. Yeah. Um, usually it would need to have three. Yeah. For us to be like, yeah, it makes sense. Even to considering do this. it, like it yeah. has to get three to get to the point where we're like, okay, now let's decide. Yeah, I feel like we brought this up on the podcast before, but but let's go Anyways, through it. It's more targeted this time. Travel. Yep. Is one. Travel is a big one for us because I think we're all aware of our time on this planet, so we want to travel when we can and do projects. It's just that, something we want to do. We want to see. Yeah, and that's everywhere. one of our own morals and one of the things that we are trying to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, another one is if it's, if it gives back to the world in some way, or it it tells, you know, a, a a powerful story or is going to create social change or it has, you know, good morals, good integrity, good, a good value or, um, something heartfelt behind it. Yeah. And value comes in different forms, but if there's a chance to have some sort of like social good or, um, a product that actually benefits people's lives in a meaningful way that's not just like materialism for materialism. Yeah, like we did a project with a company who makes solar panels, for example, and yep. we worked on these quit smoking short social ads, for example. Um, there's definitely more. Well, why don't we why don't we use that solar panel company as an example of like why we decided to go with it? So in that case, um, we Oh, were... another one. Can I mention another yeah. thing on the list? Is that if it's uh, a genre of wor- or a type of project we haven't done before. That's good for our portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a couple of different pillars. There's probably a few more that we'll touch on as we get through it. But, you know, let's use a, a case study, for example. So last year we were approached by a solar panel company to make flexible solar panels. Uh, the technology was super cool. And ultimately, it's pretty obvious that it impacts the planet in a positive way. So, um, you know, number one, the team behind it, that's another thing that we always look forward to is like, how's the communications in the first emails? Uh, How do the people seem? They were great. So like check marks, number one, we're going to work with some good people, which is always huge. Two, financially, it made sense. It was a good project. It wasn't like super high paying or low paying. It made sense for the project. It was a fair. It was a fair price. Number three, it made a, a positive impact on the world. And that was one of the ones that was weighted very highly. We get to promote and work with a company that's going to ultimately uh, produce energy for our planet and help our reduce, you know, fossil fuel emissions and all these other things. So for us, you know, we feel like we're contributing uh, to the team that's making a difference to the planet. So that that's that's a big way of like, okay, that's how we said yes to that project. But at the same time, and I it, it would be funny if they're listening because... I know that they actually watch our videos and I don't oh, know if they listen to company. our podcast. But when they first emailed us, I was a little skeptical and I thought about saying no because it just sounded so – like the scope sounded huge because yeah. it was a big project. We um, The travel entailed us having to go to uh, China, to L.A., potentially there was sweden there was yeah talk of going to sweden and there was a deadline where it had to be done within like at at the time they reached out to us i think it was four months away was their deadline yeah which and we have to factor that in with all of our other projects that are already going on and we already had travel planned and all this stuff and so i just thought this sounds ridiculous they have i i always wonder whether clients know how much this is going to cost if they've done no video work before and they hadn't yeah so I was, or I was worried that I would spend a lot of time, you know, putting together an estimate, phone calls, talking creative, all this stuff. Trying to sell it. Trying to sell it, sell us, and then it wasn't actually going to come to fruition. So I really wanted to get a sense of what they were like as people because, and through phone calls and things like that, that's why phone calls are so important because if they sounded like real genuine, you know, intelligent business people who were, you know, and I wanted to hear how keen they were about doing this project and working for us. And the value that they see in the video. Yeah. And that was going to help me decide whether I was going to continue to invest time in, um, in pitching us. Yeah. So there's like, there's like micro moments that decide even before you take the projects on, it's like, when you're working in the freelance world, you're also having to decide, do you spend time selling this too? That's a huge part of it. That's a big like yes or no before we even get into the yes or no of mm-hmm. the project. But until I got the deposit, I was still skeptical. I was like, we're not going to China. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it sounds it's it's a big scope of work, but that gives you a sense of like our thought process when we're trying to bring a client in and on our company and work on a project. Um, but it, it's it's not it's not easy. It's it's definitely hard to say no. I think um, you know we're always told all the time, especially at the beginning of your career, say yes to everything. And for a long time, I said yes to everything, and I kind of look back and it's like yes. That helped make me who I am today. Yes, but I, that helped me. Make me. <laughs> that yes, it did help make me who I am today. But at the same time, there's the flip side to it. If I had just had a targeted approach and just did one thing rather than doing so many things, like if you look at the span of like yeah. my interests and my time, like I was part of a rock band and then I pursued music as a solo artist and then I was putting time into like wake surfing and trying to be a wake surf instructor and then build my own business and but then I think pers- I'm the, I'm the type of person that thinks if you if you're like just starting taking portraits for example and that's all you're doing yeah i think that's a mistake i think you have to take different you have to expand your portfolio know what you like because you gave it a good you know the good a good try yeah and also you don't know what could necessarily end up being maybe you're the type of person that you just want something that pays well yeah and then you want to go ahead and do your portraits once in a while because that's a hard niche to build out yeah Um, and to be able to live your life on doing. Yeah. It's also hard to develop the skill set to say no. I think, you know, to trust your gut feeling. I think you say yes for a long time. And then when demand increases and your skill set is really good and you're more established is when you need to start turning things down. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, like, I mean, from my perspective, I don't know if you resonate with this as much as I do, but, um, it took me a long time to to really trust my gut feeling. I almost feel like I trusted Lizzie's opinion on certain avenues of things I wanted to women's pursue. Intuition. Yeah, her women's intuition. Women's intuition. Her <laughs> judge of character is so spot on. It took me a long time. Um, oh, I've made a few. I've misjudged a few people. But I would say, like, my ratio is pretty good. I'm, like, 90% accurate. Yeah, it's good. I trust her opinion so much when she's, like, she'll meet somebody and you know, we'll talk about it later. And she'll be like, I don't know. I don't know if you should pursue that like business opportunity or that client or that they'll probably waste your time or they're going to take advantage of you. Right. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to learn to say no. Uh, I I feel like I'm still constantly learning all the time. Like I want to say yes and like projects come in, but you know, we're getting better at it now, especially since we've hit certain like, um, comforts in our lives. You know, we have a little bit more flexibility to be able to say no, because it's like, all right, there's a bit more of like financial stability in our lives now in terms of the project and things that we got going on. So yes, we don't have to always base our yes off of like, we just need to live, which is like a good point. And then morally, like knowing that as I'm getting older, I'm so much more aware of like my integrity and like, what do I attach my name to? Yeah. So like people remember, like I'll talk to somebody and they're like, oh yeah, you're doing that project with Corona. I was like, oh, you see everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you realize. My brother saw our Corona. Did I tell you this? No. My brother, youngest brother, I'm not going to name him. He came across like one of our Corona things on one of our Facebook ads. And he, I think that was when he, was, he saw some legitimacy in what I was doing for the first time. He was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> just just throwing that in there. Yeah, well, it, it's like good. My and, family still doesn't know what I do. Well, especially, <laughs> oh God, that's a whole separate podcast. <laughs> that's another podcast. Kind of staying on topic in terms of the yes or no. Um, I mean, I, I took the mentality when I first started social media, when I was like, okay, we're going at this. Like Peter and I talked a lot about it. And he says like, he was like, say yes to everything, which was a huge thing where it's like, I, even if things weren't paid when I was first starting YouTube. But that's, that's exactly what I was saying. It was when you were first starting something. Yeah. And so you're trying to establish yourself and you're trying to be, and the thing about YouTube is you want to be everywhere. Yep. So that's why we say yes to speaking things. We say yes to being on other people's podcasts, to um, meeting up with people, to doing you know certain videos about certain things. Like we say yes to everything because we want to be you want to be in everything. Yeah. You want to be everywhere. But then uh, the the most important resource, which is the hardest thing now, and both Lizzie and I feel this all the time, is time. So when you start saying yes to everything, you literally diminish all your time and it's hard for yeah. d- directing in the right areas. Yeah. So it's I'd say the last two years is when I've really honed the skill set of saying no. Yeah. I still – it's hard to know now – when 
as like phone calls, for example. Yeah. I could do all of my phone calls probably take up an entire day. Like all of the little meetings and things we have to do, yeah. all of that could take oh, up a full day. Oh man, the day. micro things. So now I'm down to four days of the week. Yeah. And at a, and you have to do some of those. You just do. Yeah. And it's hard to get around them. So it at a, at a certain point, like I, I'll think, oh, I've been on this phone call in this meeting and I've sent these emails and I've done all these little things throughout the day, but I've never, I haven't made anything. Yeah. I haven't made a single piece of content. And that's the whole reason, like, I'm doing what I'm doing is to make content. And then I'm sitting there going, I didn't make anything today. Yeah. And was So now I have nothing to show, which is even scarier because, well, I'm kind of going off topic, but this is still something cool to talk about. Um, our, our relevancy in, some, in a lot of ways is based on how much content we can produce yep. right now. And so when we, if we're slow at putting it out or we don't put it out, then I think of my you know, the longevity in my career, like think of it as a bar, like a, ba- a full battery, like it goes down a bar yep. when I don't make something. Yep. So it doesn't matter how many freaking... You're kicking the ball up all the time. Yeah. yeah. And like, so if I'm doing all these phone calls and doing all these things for other people and they're going, great, we got this interview with Lizzie or great, we got this and this. And I'm going, but no one's going to want one with me next week if I still don't make this video. <laughs> yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I mean... That, I mean, then you're starting to get into the nose of like the everyday. So like we kind of talked a little bit about the career, like the big moves, but like saying no comes in so many different forms. It can yeah. come into like the littlest things that you do each day. Okay. Do I make a coffee or do I not make a coffee at lunch? Because I know that that's going to take up 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And do I need that 20 minutes? Well, you know, what's a good one we could talk about. What? Friends. Uh, okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. That's so huge. I mean, I mean, oh God. Okay, go. No, all friends, stop listening to podcasts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but oh, especially friends who, and we're going to talk about this on a separate podcast, but who don't get what you do and your job or yeah. or even if this isn't your job yet understand that this is important to you and something you want to invest time in yeah you have to say no to certain things with your friends like outings and hangouts and sometimes things on the weekend especially if you have a full-time job and you're trying to do youtube at the same time yeah you're gonna have to say no to some social things yeah and they might be upset they will be they're almost certainly going to be upset yep because you're deciding like no i'm valuing my career over this friendship in this time being and like if anything, there's, there's. But it's. I don't know if that. That's how they perceive it. That's how. Uh, yes. But it's not what you're saying. You're not saying that you value it more than them. It's that you have, you've create. You need to create time in your life, and you're creating it outside just outside of just like not hanging out with them on Saturday. I'm sure you're spending time during the week. To, you know, not maybe skipping the gym or doing whatever. Maybe don't do that, but you're creating time for it. Yeah. Because it's important to you and they need to respect that. Yeah. You're not valuing it over them. True. But Sorry. Thank a lot you for of that, that means, yeah, you have to say no to certain things and you have to create room. You only have so much time in the day. Yeah. That, I agree you, with you. you. Don't I, I, don't, I don't have really like much. That it's, it's, it sums it up. It's also like a very sensitive topic to, to kind of dance around because... Um, you know, friendships are important. There's still things that you should have in your life, but you know, there's certain dedicated time that you want to spend creating. And there's things that if you care and want to make a go at certain things in your life, especially as a freelancer, while you're working a nine to five job, you're legitimately going to have to say no to certain things. And leaving friendships, people who don't respect that now, if that's part of your life and you know, you, you realize that you don't have a lot in common, leaving that friendship even. Yep. You, I mean, this doesn't, now we're talking about things that aren't even involved in production, but you have to, you have to learn. I mean, we actually have a lot of friends who say yes to everything. Yeah. Thinking of one in particular. They say yes to everything. And And I think it's very aware of it. They're the reason it becomes their own biggest problem because they spend so much time doing things for other people that they never get to actually invest time in what they want to do. Yeah. Which is so heavy. But they're such like a people pleaser, which is such a nice quality to have. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard. I wish I was nicer to other people. (laughs) 
But I think it's important to be a bit savage and ruthless in your own life and, and, you know, look at it and be like, okay, if this is a priority for me, if making, you know, content or building this business or doing this is a priority, then you're going to have to make it a priority. And in order to do so, you're going to have to say no to things. So, you know, the small, starting like small exercises where, uh, you know, if you're going out for dinner and then they have dessert and you know that dessert is like a part of like something that's ruining your, your diet, let's say, you say no. So you have like a small exercise of saying, okay, if I can say no to the dessert, maybe I can say no to something else throughout the day. So like the exercise and practicing saying no, even on the smallest things, you see a phone call come in, you see a text come in from a friend and you're like, no, I'm working right now. No to that right now. It's a short term uncomfortable feeling, yep. but ultimately you'll be happier that y- you said no. And actually I watched this talk. I It was the CEO. Now I don't remember. It was so long ago, but she talked about, you know, explaining to friends, you know, if they say, Hey, do you want to get, um, do you want to get drinks on Wednesday night? And you don't respond with like, no, I have to, no, I have a yoga class. And they're like, well, you, you, have, you always go on Wednesday. Can't you just skip it? Yeah. Um, so instead of just saying, no, I have yoga, say something like, you know, it's really important to me that I commit to my yoga classes, yeah, but that's huge. I, but I do want to spend time with you. Is there any way we can find time this weekend or next week? Yeah. And always provide an alternative. It's when you just say, no, I'm, I'm doing this or I have to do this. Sorry. That yeah. people feel forgot, not forgotten. They feel um, like unappreciated. unappreciated, unwanted. Yeah. Yeah. Are not a priority, even a priority. if they are a priority. I mean, it's especially important for family to be able to like make like them a priority, yeah. make them I think feel it's all like communication. That. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's easy too um, for friends and family to see what we're doing and just being like, "But you like work for yourself. You can fit in a nice little afternoon lunch." It's like, no, it's my mom always wants to come in the afternoon or during quote unquote work hours during the day on weekdays. She's yeah. like, well, I'm going to come earlier because I don't want to sit in rush hour traffic. And I'm like, but I'm working. Yeah. And I understand that. And I said, well, if you do want to avoid rush hour traffic, could you just like read in the living room or sit out on the patio while I finish working? Yeah. And so that's a compromise that we've made. Um, because I have to say to her sometimes, you realize like if I had a normal job, I wouldn't have been home, right? And yeah. you would have still had to drive in rush hour traffic in the same way that I drive in rush hour to go see yeah. you. So communication is a big one and compromise and all of those things. Um, going back a, a bit on, I, I just wanted to touch on this, on saying no to certain clients and certain projects. Yeah. The phone call is so so important, and your gut. This is like feeling, one of the best things that I like I've ever learned from Lizzie. So. This is what I I've learned from doing them, and just you know thinking about okay, I had a bad feeling at the beginning and I ignored it. Yeah. Or that person said this thing and it turned me off, but I ignored it. That was a mistake, and we have said no to some really big projects. We said no to a six figure contract one time. Yeah, because. The person that I was in contact with who was asking for the quote, they sounded crazy to me. They sounded demanding and they actually said that, I mean, they said they wanted more revisions than we usually allow because they're particular or something. I forget the wording now, but I had all of the bad feelings because I could see this blowing up my face, blowing up in my face and being a complete nightmare. Yep. A lot of times it is like if you have a bad gut feeling, you're usually right. Yeah. If you don't like that person, how are you supposed to be able to work with them? I mean, sometimes you have to kind of bury that a little bit if it's just a person that's annoying to you. Yeah. But if you think that they are going to end up taking advantage of you and they're going to come after you later or, you know, take up to more of your time than that project's worth, yeah. then no, you shouldn't be doing it. And you should just say no to it and something else will happen. Something else will come along. It always does too. And I remember like we weren't at a huge crossroads because I think we were both in somewhat of agreement, but it was not easy to be like, okay, like we had invested a lot of time. We like made estimates. We like made the quotes. We like jumped on so many phone calls and it felt weird to be like, oh, we're just literally throwing thousands of dollars of man hours that was put into this away. We didn't spend that long because I was very... You were efficient. Okay, let's... So no, maybe it's I wasn't... Not... Af- I was nervous from the beginning. I think I made one estimate. 
but still, okay, so let's not, not maybe not thousands, but maybe like a few hundred dollars worth of man Yeah, hours. we put a few hundred dollars worth of hours into it. And he kept wanting to get on phone calls. Yeah. And then they kept wanting to add things to a budget that seemed really expensive. And the, the scope of the project, if the scope of the project seems unreasonable and ridiculous, then you probably shouldn't do it. If they're not taking any of your advice and you're being hired as the specialist here, then you probably shouldn't do it. Yeah. If they're telling you that you they need like 10 revisions on something that means they're indecisive they don't know what they're doing and they don't respect your time yeah it doesn't mean that they want options options is different they didn't and he didn't word it as we're not sure whether we want to go this way or this way you know could we get a couple of different could we add maybe two more revisions or how much would two more revisions cost if we add that later it was he said we're very um, it wasn't demanding. Do you remember what the word was he used? No. You're very, we are very, um, I don't know, something. It, it basically sounded like we're very controlling. It was very, yeah, <laughs> we're very controlling. And I want to say demanding. I don't know. Sorry, guys. Um, and we want, we want this many revisions. And I was like, oh, this, no. Yeah. No, no. This has got all the bad vibes written all over it. Yeah. And I'm at the time, though, we like we could have like used the contract oh, and the timeline and the time. Oh, the timeline. Yeah. So, well, it, yeah. I mean, we can dive down this for a long time, but I think that was a really big decision where we were like, we're gonna say no, and that's just that's. I just remember it. you being disappointed, and I was saying to you, I said, "This is gonna be a bad idea." I can see them coming back at us, and I can see this taking forever, and I can see this being a nightmare. And I'm. I'm I think I was just disappointed in like the person that we were working with. To just be yeah. like, this could have been great, and it, because of the project manager involved, it was like it was going to be a disaster. Yeah, and you just knew the company as a whole. You could have done cool stuff. But also, if if they hired him, what kind of people were the rest of them? We only ever talked to him. True. So that's that's very true. It's they true. Hire. A, it's true. Guys, pay money while we go watch it. Anyways, um, something else I wanted to bring up is well how how do you feel well i get (laughs) well how do you what are your thoughts on collabs and when people are saying and reaching out and being like we should collab as a youtuber yeah like i mean from a youtube perspective or social media perspective like you know i think you need to decide whether it's right for you to do it or not you shouldn't say yes to it because they asked yeah you don't need to say anytime a friend asks if anyone asks you to hang out and you don't actually like them you don't have to say yes every time someone asks you to hang out yeah you know what i mean i mean that's that's a really good place to start like practicing the yes or no so i like so number one always make your decision based if it's the right thing for your brand so whether that's like visually whether that's like a business thing from like a numbers perspective like whatever you see the value in working on that collaboration well here's an example i haven't done a collaboration with her but we've talked about it and we will is harris we met her in the fall last year yeah this past year 2018 and i think at the time she had like ten thousand, yeah or maybe less subscribers but her stuff was so good and i messaged her a few times i said i want to do a video with you you know when whenever you come back or when i go to washington or maybe i'll book a flight i said when i can find time and so we we message a lot about it and then recently she blew up yeah and now she has like almost ninety thousand subscribers but that and so that really wasn't my intention when i wanted to do a collab with her i liked her and i liked her work and i wanted people to see her work yep because it is a really big way of growing on YouTube is through collaborations. And there's yep. nothing wrong with that. Um, and I think it's a great way. It's basically like a referral. Yeah. It's me going, hey, everyone in my audience, if you like me, you will like Is. I like her stuff so much that I want you to also see it. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not, and people look at it as this like scummy, incestuous thing sometimes where they're like, oh, well, they just got a shout out from this person. But that's how you do it. Like her stuff was good. It's just she needed more eyes on it. Yeah. And unfortunately, I didn't end up having a huge hand in that. She, mirac- she was amazing herself. and did it all by herself. Um, but yeah, that's, so it's whatever the motivation is for you. If, if you, and I think it shouldn't just be about numbers. You no, should no, have to no. like was, the person and like to, their work. I was going to say that I think 
from my perspective, number one, I think it's like you got to connect as friends first. So there's lots of people that like we could have done a collab like the day we met, but yeah. we chose not to. You know, you spend like I'll hang out with somebody once or twice before we actually go and do a collab together. Unless you've spent time like Skyping or texting or on the phone or something like that. But yeah. generally, I want to be friends with that person first. Yeah. And then number two, I want to respect them for the work that they do and like love what they do. Because I think number one, you, you, you have to, if you're doing a shout out or a collaboration, I think you have to be fans of each other's work. Like it just yeah. feels, it does feel like if you're just doing it from a numbers perspective, and like, that's a little icky, and like yeah. I really you're like just using somebody. Yeah. It's not the same thing. And there's like there's certain collaborations where it's like casually been like offered through like DMs and things like that. And I'm just like, no, it's just not gonna make it doesn't make sense because our brands don't make sense and there's other things there that I'm like, yeah, maybe from a numbers perspective I'd get a boost, but does it is it gonna be the right types of fans? Is it gonna be fun to even yeah. do this? And it, I am I fan of the stuff that they're doing too. Yeah. So you have to ask those questions. So you know, without well, like Sorel did that for me. Yeah, because we were friends. Yeah, no, for sure. And we did a video together. And Peter for me too. Yeah, I and, was literally I was nothing. And I made a comment to her. I remember, and I said, "Oh yeah," I forget what we were talking about, but I said something like, "Oh yeah," and then, you know, people always don't like collabs. Well, like, and I said, "I guess you're helping me." And she goes, "I had I had someone help me too." She goes, "I had a friend who was a YouTuber, and she gave me." you know, a leg up. Yeah. And then I went from there. She goes, everybody has a friend or someone and, you know, it's it. a lot of it is through collaborations, which I think is so cool, which is why, like, the platform is so collaborative. Yeah. In, you know, making cool content and everything. And so why would we not use that? I think it's so important to have the right morals when you're making the decisions. So, like, some our feedback from our perspective is always... I mean, definitely don't chase the numbers. Don't look at an account and be like, oh, they have 100,000. What can I, what can they do for me? Like, how can they make me bigger? It's like, number one, you have to provide value. Number two, be like genuine fans of that person. Don't just like f want to use them, which is like a whole, I would hope that most people don't feel that way. I think and we all want to help each other, which I think is so. I think is so cool about YouTube. I've definitely met a poop. I met a poo. Yeah, I met, met a, a <laughs> Met a few people who don't look at it that way and have since isolated themselves because they're so um, hostile and so protective of their work and yeah. they think everybody's copying them and whatever. I don't get that stuff. I don't get it at all. This is such a cool space to make things with other people, to get inspired, to help each other, you know, keep this going and make it a career if you want it to. Like, why Why would you ruin such a nice thing? Anyways, back to saying no. <laughs> well, are there any other categories that you feel that we could, yes. like, could go? Saying no to working and yes to personal time or time with friends. Yeah, huge. Boom. Truth bomb. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It so, Chris is just like, oh, how do I even well, no, unpack there, this box? Well, there's of a lot here. Awkwardness. So it's not awkward. I just mean like I'm definitely. I'm hi. I'm Chris, and I'm a workaholic. <laughs> She's laughing. Hi, I'm Lizzie, and I've uh, I have Lightroom lard. Yeah. <laughs> Lightroom lard is when you spend too much time editing photos and not enough time being in the world. And That's me. Out. No, you're not Lightroom lard. No. Okay, what we're trying to get at not is yet. that. Um, it's very easy for work to consume your entire life too in this space. Um, so with saying <laughs> no to things, it's freeing up your time and your own mental space and capacity. Like Lizzie and I say no to work on weekends unless it's like we have to do it. Unless it's like a contractually obligated to do it or it's like going to be some sort of fun thing on a weekend. But we try to keep our weekends more or less sacred and we try to yeah. keep our evenings sacred. So that's saying no to try, our probably phone. Not <laughs> but we're both in agreement with it. And that's okay because we also have, we'll probably take up other time this week where we can yeah. just like be a bit more casual about I actually things. am taking off a little bit of time this week. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're moving our working hours around. But it's really important because, you know, all these people like the hustle, the hustle life. It's like, no, it's like you don't need that. And like we've learned a lot more of setting boundaries and saying no to work not even just work in general but saying no to the working time and spreading 
saying no to certain projects so that it doesn't feel as stressful so that you Mm -hmm. have a more enjoyable life saying no to um to just just putting your phone down and just not working and having time together it's funny i consider myself a person like i remember even when i was a little kid I had so much self-discipline in terms of, okay, I'm going to watch this show and at 5.30, I'm going to go do my homework or whatever. That's great. And I would I would do it. I was not that kid. Yeah, I totally was. And I think that's why I, like, I'm able to make this my job now is because of that self-discipline. I'm like, I need to get this done before I can do that. Yeah. And that's how my whole brain works all the time. And you need to apply that same self-discipline to your free time and your personal time. Like I said to Chris, I was like, look, let's be honest here, guys. I'm a girl. I like feeling pretty, okay? That's just how it is. So I was like, I don't feel pretty. I'm taking time to make myself feel prettier. So I went and I got a pedicure and a facial, and I felt prettier, and I made time for it. She prioritized her mental health and her physical health and i it was it's like a it's a physical thing but then it improves your mental health when you like when you look better you feel better when you wear like a nice suit or something you feel good yep when you get a fresh haircut you feel, I feel good like a slob there's a nacho on my shirt right now well same. and i want to go work today out. is not today i don't have that same self-esteem <laughs> but it actually but it did help a lot and when you recognize that oh i'm i'm not as happy with you know how i look right now or i really need a haircut or i really need this and then make time for those things too yeah otherwise it will make you less productive also because we also have to be on camera all the time yeah and you just feel bad and then like it's like a weird cycle where you just feel weird and then you're working and then you feel weird about working but you thought you'd feel better by getting the work done you just need to spread things out there are studies that prove like when you when you put time into your appearance you have more self-confidence yeah I just think just the quality of life, like one of the things that stuck with me recently is, and I think it's like Sorrel might have chatted about it or um, I saw it on Instagram or something like that. It's just like more life in the life that you have. It's so easy for work and social media and everything like that to be everything all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just like... Or your job, your your nine to five job or whatever it is you guys It's your identity and everything. But I think it's like one of the things that I want to do right now is I just want to like... I want to dive into like a whole new learning something new. So whether it's cooking, whether it's like, Mm -hmm. I want to like, we have these Can-Am Rikers. Like I'd love to know more about the engines and I'd love to know how it works and just study it and like know how to fix something like that. If it ever, if something ever did happen, not that it would because they're a great product. When you fix it, (laughs) can you take your shirt off while you do it? Okay. No. Sweaty. (laughs) Oh my God, Lizzie. But um, (laughs) I didn't, for me personally, it's just like, I, I feel like because work and social media and our business has consumed so much of our time, we're trying to say no to other things so that I can just have a better quality of life in general. Um, I love what we do. I love our jobs. And this is everything I've ever wanted in terms of a career. But at the same time, you know, it's important to like, I want to read a book. Maybe I want to play a video game. Maybe I just want to spend and go on a date with Lizzie and have like us time and we get a lot of us time but like but those opportunities like yeah those opportunities aren't just going to i think a lot of people go oh well when i'm less busy oh well when you know when this project is over oh when this is over busy but that's it like that time just isn't going to magically open up for you and there's going to be a spot and an appointment will be booked to get your haircut or your reservation at the keg won't book itself you know you have to be like thursday we need we need a date night you know, and you and I go, okay, we really actually, we should probably spend time on our relationship. Thursday, done. Booked it. That's it. And and everything else gets moved. Yep. That's just it. And obviously, make sure you're hitting your big deadlines. But it's up to you to schedule your time and to plan your life around that. And in the same way that you, like, what type of person are you? Are you going to plan your work around your life or your life around your work? Yep. And there is a delicate balance of both. And that means just going, no, I'm not working tonight, even though I could name like four different things I could get done tonight before tomorrow. And then I would feel good about it. Sometimes you need that personal time. Yep. And I think it's important because I think there's going to be a lot of people out here who are listening there that are just like, well, I I can't say no. And then like at work or something. Yeah. And I can't say no. And I can't relate to this because there's no flexibility in whatever I'm doing. Or I, it's like, I can't just be savage and, and just X things out. Because this is what I need to do. I think what, there's, there's... What would that be, like, a need to do? 
hypothetically. I, hypothetically, let's say it is a nine to five and you're like, I can't, I can't move this or I can't say no to this. No, job but what is the work. thing that you're trying to do? What, what's, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to say that there's definitely like, I don't know the example that I'm going to bring up, but I know there's people that are for sure listening that say like, maybe whatever they have in their life that's going on that they're trying to say yes or no to, let's say it is saying no, they, they're feeling like I can't not say yes to this yeah. situation. So in that case, um, y- your next best thing to saying no is finding either a compromise or a solution that works. So let's say um, we, Lizzie and I have a very big project that we're working on, and but we still want to prioritize date night and we still want to have that. So what do we, what would we do in that situation? We would hire somebody who can help take the workload off, which is now putting we're putting value from a monetary perspective on our date night. Or we take a, a day off the following week or something Exactly. Like that. So I'm saying that, you know, you might feel like no is not an option. Or sorry, saying no is not an option. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, oh my God, I'm like yep, yep. in my own head. No, I gotcha. Um, but I think there's always going to be a way to find a solution and you might still be able to get that yes, but you don't have to be directly involved. And that might yeah. require an investment financially or time in another area. But I think... You know, I I like being like, no, yeah. be savage and say no, but well, that might not be the right. that's a practical approach. No, it's a very practical approach. But on the other hand, based on the video I recently made, if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Thanks so much. It's um, really good. You didn't. She didn't even need to say that. She could have looked at me and gave me the <laughs> wink and I would have been like, it's really good. You should go check it out. But um, it's very it's about, inspirational. It's about making shit happen for yourself. So if there's something you really want to do, you have to decide to just do it. If you really want to take a month and go to Italy – and your nine to five only gives you two weeks off, but you're like, mm, but I really need a month. I don't know what else to tell you. You might need to quit your job. How important is that trip to Italy for you? Yeah. You only, you YOLO guys, you really only live once. No one, and it, it means making hard decisions. Yeah. But if you, if you commit to saving up for Italy and going to Italy and doing that month, and you apply that same discipline to doing that, that you were, that you would when you come back and look for a new job, and then I'm sure you'll find a new job. Yep, because you, know you got mean? that job before. Yeah, because you got that job before. It de- like you have to be your own cheerleader, your own fire under your butt to yeah. do it. Well, what we're really getting at is like fear, fear of <laughs> fear plays we'll in the whole from in decision making in general. Fear of not like if you say like I experienced this. So let here here's an experience that I had. So there was a project that got offered uh, where I got to travel. The money was like decent, but it was just the timeline was like a little bit awkward. And then I saw the campaign go live afterwards and I saw the people who were involved on it. And I was like, Duh, should FOMO. I have said yes? And I was like experiencing this like crazy amount of FOMO. And I was like, oh, I could have gotten this, this, and this. It's like, no. At the time, I truly believed that no was the best answer. And I still have to like stand behind that even when you know that, okay, maybe I could have been a part of it. And fear plays into that. Fear of missing out, fear of not making the person happy, fear of losing friends, fear of all these things. But I think, you know... The worst thing you can do is... But it's never like the worst... There's never like... the Yeah. The worst thing in your brain almost never happens. The worst thing you can do, if there's something you want, the absolute worst thing you could do is not try to do that, not try to get it. Because you don't want to be... At the end of your life going, I wonder if I could have, but I won't know because I didn't actually try. Yeah. It could, and really this all comes down to like playing a giant game of chess, which is like making the right moves where you're saying yes or no, as you like move along the chess board, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of that is just your gut, like know what's right, know what to say yes to, know what to say no to. And you, only you can really make those decisions for yourself. Like don't rely on other people to help you with to to make those decisions for you in your personal life and how you want to live your life just the people you grew up with don't necessarily want the same things out of life that you do yeah and that's okay i think there's okay i always said this thing when i was teaching wake surfing (laughs) lessons i would tell people and like for whatever reason this like really worked because i think it just like switched their mindset on things but um i'd always say don't let the wave take you for a ride you take the wave for a ride. Oh yeah, you said that to me when I was learning. And that then that did a. I think that probably helped a lot. It did help. Because yeah. you realize that you're like in control and that you're the one 
you're not like someone else isn't making the decisions for you. Mm -hmm. Like you're the one that's actively deciding like, okay, I'm the one that's taking this life for a ride. Mm -hmm. I want to go and do what I want to do. And anytime you feel like a passenger in your own life, that's a problem. Yeah. I've said that to Chris a few times. I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I feel like a passenger. I feel like life. a passenger you, in my own life. You put that in an Instagram post one time. Did I? Yeah. I don't It's yeah. like, oh God, are Sometimes you not happy? Sometimes I do <laughs> because we just, we get... I want to say shipped off places, but sometimes when I'm really overwhelmed, it feels like that when I'm not being totally present and I'm worried about work and stuff, I feel like I'm being carted around when I don't necessarily feel like doing something or whatever. Yeah. And a part of you has to force yourself to do those things. And in other parts, like maybe I shouldn't be here, you know, I mean, I feel like we're so off topic now. And no, we're not because <laughs> we're talking about making decisions in your life and most decisions are a yes or no oh guys decisions are hard that's a very adult and thing i think you just got to stand behind to you know stand behind your choices um know that you're not missing out um and saying no is just as important as saying yes and on that note should we wrap up the podcast now i think so i think that's i think that's great um hopefully you guys saw some great some value okay, in this billy snow Billy, this has been Billy Snow <laughs> <laughs> with Lizzie Pierce and Chris Howe. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you did, uh, please go on to the Apple Podcasts or the places where you can ever leave a review and just please leave us a review. Send a little note because it means a lot to us. It means a lot to us, and we do this for you guys. We do this just for fun. We do not uh, have sponsors or anything. We literally do this for you and yep. for us. Thanks. S Love you guys. Uh, hopefully you all have an amazing day. Bye. Bye.